Good afternoon. Welcome back. My name is Jason Medlock. I'm your host of Expansion of Consciousness, and we have a wonderful guest that will be on our show tonight. Um, and this show is ironically about something that we've talked about before, and that's psychedelics, um, the plant, the mushroom. Uh, we've talked about this before, and we've, you know, uh, gone off into the depths of what the trip would be like, and sharing experiences on what did we learn about the human ego uh you know how did we observe ourselves uh what message did we get uh uh after this experience so i'm excited that we have a brilliant uh, uh brilliant uh, young man tonight that'll be talking about uh that very topic but i want to also make sure that um you guys are um, just staying in tune with yourself, listening to the smallest details of what goes on within, within counseling the conscious mind and trying to hear the subconscious mind for your answers. The quieter you are, the more information you'll be able to get. But we're going to talk about Jahan right now. Uh, Jahan completed his dissertation on psychedelics in psychology, cosmology, and consciousness program at the California Institute of Integral Studies. His book, The uh, Philosophic Connection, Psychedelics, the Transformation of Consciousness and Evolution of the Planet, an Integral Approach, was published by North Atlantic Books and distributed spring 2022 by Penguin Random House. Jahan earned his master's in consciousness and transformative studies from John F. K. University and his bachelor's from the University of Arizona with a major in psychology and minors in psychic psychology and mathematics. And I said psychics, but I meant physics. Aside from academic work, he has undergone several major trainings, including graduating from uh, Hakomi uh, Somatic psychotherapy program and training for years within the Maztec mushroom tradition. He assisted the psychedelic, uh, psychedelic assist psychotherapy certification training at CIIS for two years and mentored at the Center for Consciousness Medicine. He's currently a content advisor, uh, the, uh, the, the synthesis, uh, uh, synth synthetic, and I don't know how, why I'm messing that name up. Let me just go on with psychedelics. Uh, guided training and works as facilitator for legal philosophic mushroom ceremonies in Jamaica with Ottoman retreats. He has been doing on this journey um, and he's been on, a, on about 35 podcasts this year sharing this wonderful information on how these marvelous mushrooms, these, this creation of God can help you, can help you with PTSD, can help you with depression. Um, uh, but without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and bring Jahan on. And he had a lot of words in there that, that tripped me up. And normally that doesn't happen to me. But the esteemed uh, Dr. Jahan, I didn't want to mess your last name up. So I'm going to I'm going to let you say it to the audience. But thank you for coming on the show. We re I really appreciate it. And the audience does, too. Now, it's an honor to be here with you, Jason, and your guests. And the last name is Khamsazade. You know, it's Persian. I'm, uh, dad's from Iran. I'm from Mexico, but I was born here in the U.S., so okay. I still have a very long last name. <laughs> so the journey with your education, uh, and, you know, studying psychedelics, uh, the philocybin uh, strand in the mushrooms, um, you know, man, there are a lot of different... Um, uh, I don't want to say species, but a lot of different types of mushrooms out there. Some of them will kill you if you eat them. Um, how did you, how did this, how did you gravitate to this type of uh, study? Um, you know, I see you have a broad, uh, di diverse range of metaphysical type, um, you know, uh, training. How, what made you go in this direction? 
You know, I think there was a general inclinations towards wanting to study metaphysics as long as I can remember, you know, definitely went through a lot of existential inquiry as a teen, you know, I was kind of suicidal and depressed and trying to figure out what is going on, what is this reality, what are we in? And then I had a psilocybin experience at 18 that really shattered my paradigm. I was an atheist at the time and helped me see that there was a spiritual reality. God exists, that we're all united, you know, that there is love is the most important thing, followed by learning. And that one night changed my entire life drastically. And, you know, with what it said, love's the most important, followed by learning. I kind of used that as my compass moving forward. And two months after that, I started college. And that kind of led me on a 20-year academic track, you know, focused on consciousness. And about seven years ago, circled back to psychedelics. They'd been part of my life the whole time. But I was like, you know, this is the most transformative and powerful modality I've ever come across, you know, with all my kind of years of studying the different kinds of psychotherapy and spiritual practices. And so I was like, it's this is what I want to dedicate my life to. So I went through various trainings, you know, I wrote my book on the topic and, um, you know, it, it was the most transformative for me. And I think as we can talk about soon, even this cl scientific clinical studies show that it's, it's hard to compare to any other modality, whether it comes to mystical experiences, depression, anxiety, you know, an overall sense of healing and wellness. Well, you know, I've, I've had an experience, and we'll talk about that later in the show, but I, I'm going to focus on the uh, psilocybin and the ingredients, one of the ingredients that are in the magic mushrooms, uh, quote-unquote. Quote. The moment that you experience this this level of heightened consciousness talk to us about day one uh, uh planning to do mushrooms the things that have to happen um how you started what your experiences were uh, and just a just just kind of a, a a good understanding on you know what is this for the audience you know so maybe i'll frame what is this compound itself and how it interacts with us and then you know we can move into more of the technicalities of how to experience it you know, sure. for yourself and so you know given that this has been a quite a journey and you know i saw them as quite an anomaly within our kind of western paradigm of like how does such a substance even exist to give this kind of results <laughs> exactly. and so I, I had to look at you know evolution and in, in, in ecology how did this even evolve so it looks like psilocybin evolved about 70 million years ago and to really get it we have to get a deep understanding of what are mushrooms so uh fungi is one of the three large uh, kingdoms of biology you know so you have fungi you have plants in the animal kingdom fungi is about 2.5 billion years old animals about 500 million so they dwarf animals by far and so the body of uh fungi is known as mycelium it's this large underground web structure that connects all the roots in an environment right they were the first root systems of plants 80 percent 90 percent of plants have a symbiotic relationship to mycelium 80 percent would go out of existence so our entire evolutionary history has been on top of this living network and out of this living network comes the little mushrooms, the fruits, and the cap and stem formation. And about 200 different species around the world of these mushrooms have psilocybin. And psilocybin fits into the 5-HT2A serotonin receptor in our brain better than serotonin itself with no biotoxicity, creates a hyper-connected brain state, and stimulates what's known as neurogenesis, the growth of new neurons. The brain physically begins to grow. So an idea that really took me at 19 and is like the core of my book was – this idea put forward by Terrence and Dennis McKenna that perhaps it was our relationship with psilocybin that actually catapulted human evolution and given us this level of awareness. The idea being simple that we know there's a large consciousness expansion in our species compared to other animals. So maybe there was conscious expanding compounds in the environment where we evolved in Africa. And as mycologist Paul Stamets points out, the most common mushroom in the Africa savannas is the psilocybin variety. So for me, this took a lot of things It kind of healed kind of our story of our species kind of comes together to these missing links, you know, of our story, but also can lead us back into the sense of wholeness and realign with these deeper processes of evolution found in nature. So I want to stop there. We can get to the technicalities of how to experience it, you know, in a little bit. Yeah. And, and I want and I want you to do that. But imagine. 70 million years ago, but imagine when. Uh, not modern man, but uh, prehistoric man found mushrooms. And they weren't as intelligent, but there were intelligent races throughout the history of this planet. But the prehistoric man f 
finding a mushroom and experiencing a level of consciousness that way. What what would that look like? It's huge. You know, I spent years just thinking that, that about like just planning it out to the effect it would have. So first, just let's look what the science is today, because we could infer a lot of that to like early humanity. So there's 65 percent of people in the right setting setting have a classical mystical experience. Eighty percent overcome depression and 80 percent over overcome addictions and anxieties. Right. We know it creates a high level of creativity and empathy. So a lot of these would have been uses to the consciousness of our tribal group framework. And there's a lot of work to suggest that it created the emergence of art itself, of creativity, that it catapulted language through a process known as synesthesia. Synesthesia is a process when consciousness conflates one sense for another, where people can smell something and all of a sudden see a color in their mind. So through this process, they were able to link meaning and sounds and symbols that completely changed culture. We're also saying that this is a grounded explanation for the emergence of religion. Right, 65% of people have a classical mystical experience, and now you're a primate and then later early, early humanity roaming these fields, finding mushrooms, and about half the time you have a mystical experience with the right dose. That's huge. So it creates a spiritual impulse, open to archetypal reality, a deep connection with nature. With this, you have the emergence of the first rituals. The first religious systems, and we look back at the oldest religious historical texts, like the Rig Vedas, the oldest historical text as part of the Hindu tradition, they have about 120 lines talking about psychedelic plant and fungi. And we see this in all the early religions, and we go back even to Greece. So it creates a big context of group bonding, you know, and even at smaller doses, uh, studies have found that it increases what's known as the visual acuity, and it increases sight perception and the perception of of depth, which would have allowed us to say, for example, see snakes in the grass or look for new sources of food. At higher levels, it creates what's called oh, copulation to stimulate sexual arousal, right? And so then you have a primate group that not only sees better, that is having more sex, that is a little bit smarter, that's more creative, and a deep sense of bondness with its community, right? So all these would have been evolutionary advantages to the, our species. Wow. And, you know, I, you know, I wonder that when 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 we think about the use of psychedelics, you know, like the CEO of GoDaddy.com, and I don't, I don't, I forget his name, Bob something, the CEO of GoDaddy.com, and he microdoses, he microdoses for uh, his PTSD, and there are some studies out there that says that show that psychedelics can even help with depression, it can help with a variety of different mental illness, but our government is slow. They're slow to uh, legalize it. They are. It looks like there's some legislation moving, but they're slow to do it. John, there are so many plants and medicines out there across the world that can heal naturally what we as humans face. What's your take on that? You know, it's... As I mentioned, it's so outside of our normal paradigm. So it's taken a while for society as a whole to understand how is this possible, right? It's There's really no other point or reference or metaphor for a psychedelic experience aside from maybe deep, deep meditation. And so there's a good line from Michael Pollan's bestseller, How to Change Your Mind, came out in 2018 on psychedelics. So even if we look at what happened in the 60s, he said, what other point in human history did the youth have such a searing rite of passage that the prior generation didn't understand, right? So there's this huge link where all of a sudden youth are huge expansive states. Then they're pushing for a political revolution against the Vietnam War. There was all the stuff around freedom for races, a rise of feminism, ecological awareness. We saw the transformation in the arts during the 60s. So it was a lot of rapid change. It scared the establishment of older generations, right? But we can look at indigenous uh, traditions around the world that still use psychedelics, some of them for thousands of years, right? So we know that there's healthy use cases for this because of psychology today and other indigenous people. And so it's taken a while for our system to even get used to this idea because the general kind of response to change for a lot of people's anxiety, you know, so they, we've kind of get used to it, kind of just massage it in yeah. slowly. So, Jahan, you mentioned earlier that, you know, out of all the modalities that you've come in contact with, that you've studied, by far, psychedelics has given you, has given you the most, has given you the far, the most experiences that, um, that expanded your consciousness. And when I, when I think about it, in my spiritual walk, in my understanding, I started off with one of the modalities being astral travel. And I oh. felt how the 
the vibration of my ears and then it became my shoulders and then it was on my arms just my skin was just just it's like a motor like an electric car mm. and then all of a sudden it was all the way down to my you know feet and then disengaged and i was in the astral body mm. oh but when i took the mushroom and i had a monitor you know, I've, I've done my homework <laughs> so i had a monitor and I took 1.3 grams. I didn't want to go to two grams the first time. And I was just, let me just go 1.3 grams. Yeah. Jamal, I, 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 you know, mixed it up and I drank it, laid there, got comfortable. And speaking of these modalities, you know, ones, they all do the same, but one could be better than the other. But some of the, mm -hmm. some of the actual symptoms are the same. My my symptoms, once I started to really, really go under, it was like a rush of electricity in my body and something was pulling. It was pulling. It never it, it was trying to it was just pulling. And then all of a sudden pull out. And this time I was gone somewhere. But during the actual travel, I was in the room floating in the corner of the the, the ceiling. But the psychedelic experience, same um you know, not the, the the way I got out of the body and then boom. And the strangest thing, I, I, I was waiting on this interview. Yeah. I'm just observing myself have a conversation with people I've had conversations with three weeks prior. Mm -hmm. But this time, Jahan, it looks like it's in 4D. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, I mean, just, just right in the person's face. Mm -hmm. And I observed me being the one of the most terrible, I mean, just I observed just how I talked. Wow. It was, you know, I was talking to somebody and it was bad. Hmm. And after I continue to do more research and I read the book, Be Here Now, hmm. and cool. observing the human ego while in this, while on this trip, while, you know, going through these, um, you know, passages of, of our consciousness and time. I just want to share that with you yeah. and see from you because because you're the expert. How do you, I, I know you can analyze and observe the human ego, but I was observing conversation mm. that I was having that wasn't pleasant. Mm. Yeah, no, I thank you for sharing that. I and mean, the whole thing was gorgeous and. <laughs> You know, psychedelic work right now will focus on mushrooms. It's not necessarily easy work, you know, in a big way, it shows us our shadows, you know, so that we come more whole and we live more in alignment with ourselves, other people on the planet. And so sometimes it forces us to see hard parts of us, whether it's shame, guilt, anger, rage, depression, trauma, you know, um, but that makes it real, you know, so it's, it's not, there isn't much of the possibility of what's known as spiritual bypassing. You know, it forces you to face the truth. And so what I'm hearing is that you get to see a part of your personality, the way you showed up, that was hard to see, but it allows you then to make changes. Is that right? You yeah, got kind of right. a reflection? Yeah. That's a reflection, but let's, let's, let's go a little bit deeper for the audience. Yeah. It seems that Source has created a number of interesting um, ways mm -hmm. for avatar, human avatars, while the mm -hmm. spirits are incarnated in these bodies, mm -hmm. to access consciousness. Mm -hmm. through quantum healing hypnosis, mm -hmm. through uh, channeling, through meditation, through psychedelics. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm sure there are other modalities out there that can move you more towards consciousness with astro travel and with psychedelics, the ones that are making this, the experience more profound. Totally. What are we dealing with here, Jahan? Yeah. What are we actually seeing here? Are we seeing... We know that we're in a hologram. Are we actually actually seeing? Um, you know how in the in the, in the video games there are like treasure point. You got to find this treasure. You find mm -hmm. it five hundred points. Are we actually seeing things that Source has put here on this in this third dimensional realm for us to figure out and find and use to access where we're really from? Yeah. No. Yeah. And what we really are, you know, and so yes. just to kind of spread and look at all these different modalities, we're working with the same structure of consciousness, ours and the universe, regardless of the modality, right? Whether it's psychedelics, astral travel, meditation. So we're looking at the same overall patterns, right? And so right. the insights are going to be the same.
you know, like a deep sense of oneness. We are love, you know, live in alignment in a caring way that we are powerful. You're going to get the same insights regardless of the modality. You know, it's like many ways of experiencing the same building just from different angles. And there's an, you know, what I found like the deepest experiences are that of unity because it's hard to imagine anything bigger than oneness like with everything, whether it's yourself, the universe and so on. And the universe is so big that there's infinite ways to experience oneness. Right? Mm -hmm. And so the, the picture I've come to look at is the evolution of the planet. We can always go bigger, you know, but the planet's been evolving, you know, about 4.5 billion years, biological life for 3.5 billion. And everything evolves in deep symbiotic union through this interdependence, right? So you're affected yeah. by all the organisms around you. So this happens slowly over and over time. And so what I've seen psychedelics as is, is chemical messengers in nature. They're here to modulate consciousness. So there's a reason they exist, right? There's a book called um, Animals and Psychedelics by George or Saramani, showing other animals, you know, use it. And there's a book called Intoxication by Ronald K. Siegel. For 20 years, he was a professor at um, UCLA studying uh, psychoactive substances. He found that about 93% of the animal kingdom alters their consciousness chemically. He calls it the fourth drive of evolution, right? So after the drive for sex, food, water, given the opportunity, we want to alter our consciousness. You know? So we see it in humanity, but we've not noticed that it's a deep part of the process of nature. That's why. So there's over like 2,000 plants that have DMT. There's over 200 different you know, fungi that have just um, psilocybin, but there's so many more unexplored. And so we can look at these as doorways that have always existed and have always been here. I'd argue that the reason we have these other spiritual capacities is because our early human ancestors had so much psychedelic use, expanded their consciousness so much, and it changed our brain, that now we have those capacities without the use of psychedelics. Like mm. we earned these in some way. It's just because of millions of years, millions of times we altered states and some of those capacities stuck. So now that we can go that through, through meditation, through astral travel, you know, that we have a deep sense of the possibility of telepathy because we've experienced that oneness over and over in our deep past. So we are experiencing the use of psychedelics along with evolution. Yeah, that is simultaneously. Evolution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is how we evolve. Mm. You know, that's that's the argument. So our consciousness is beamed in. Let's talk about the evolution of our consciousness mm -hmm. and how we access it. We know we can access it a number of ways. I love to do it using transcendental meditation. Mm. And when I, you know, I do 20 and 20 twice a day. Mm. And when I get to Mark 18 or 17 minutes, 17, 18, I, I'm so far into transcendence. Mm. I can, I can directly speak to the, my subconscious mind mm. and hear the answers. Mm. And I learn a technique as an associate remote viewer from my coach who trained me how to suppress the conscious mind while you're using remote viewing. And when we're touching the page and we're trying to understand what target we're looking for, or what's the answer to the question for the client. When that first low line piece of information comes to you, that's the answer. That's the, that that's the message. Anything past 1.4, 1.7 seconds, the conscious mind begins to answer for you. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Like, I think the universe is always talking to us um, and through all the parts, uh, through intuition. And intuition is generally just spontaneous right away. And then we either interpret it off or second guess ourselves that we've kind of lost a state of flow and synchronicity, you know, connection to the Tao that exists. So, you know, just to kind of compare these two, you know, I, there's a period where I was doing, got really deep into meditation was an hour, two hours, three hours a day. Wow. And there's that kind of like traditional that, that breakthrough, the ego death. Oh my God, I'm scared I'm going to die. You break through. Then there's a sense of like deep God presence and like beaming and confidence and like peace. And the first thought that arose was I've experienced this on psilocybin, but this yes. just took me hundreds of hours. Right. And so I, I think they all, like I mentioned, they all lead to the similar place. And to kind of you know resonate with what you're saying, what the neuroscience has shown is that the, the brains of high-level meditators have been doing this for a while, and those on a psychedelic state are very similar. It quiets what's called the default mode network, the ego part of the brain. And when the ego kind of quiets down, the whole brain hyperconnects. You know, so we become more sensitive to these subtleties in our consciousness. The ego is the mother. The ego is very, very uh it's, it, it can it can it can stunt or stop a lot of things, yeah. um, it, a lot of manifestations. Um, the ego needs to be dealt with 
and it has to be um, suppressed in a lot of different ways. And I love it. The book, again, we just talked about it a minute ago, Be Here Now, The Death of the Human yeah, Ego yeah, yeah, yeah. and how to get rid of it. Yeah. You know, um, I want to talk about now, let's go to, I'm going to put this up for a second, um, just outstanding work by you, uh, Jahan. But, but let's talk about the philocybin uh, connection. Mm -hmm. And you wrote this book, Why? What does it say to the audience? Um, and I'll ask, I'll ask you the last question after you finish ask, answering those two. <laughs> yeah. It was a massive undertaking, you know. It was like five years of solid work, but it was like synthesizing the last 20 years. And, you know, part of it was at the heart, that idea that we evolved because of it and just bringing down all the evidence that moves in that direction. But also the first chapter is there to present all the known science. You know, it's, it's the publisher writes. It's the most comprehensive book on it. Um, I've mm -hmm. read 75 books just on psychedelics to write it and then went through a lot of the research that I could find. And then it kind of ends with a vision of how we can move forward with the species. You know, so I think something that we're lacking is visions of the world we want to create. And so a lot of times in these psychedelic experiences, you know, we tap into what Carl Jung could say, the collective unconscious, or I would say more like the guy in mind or like the larger being that we're a part of. And it can show us through intuitions, you know, through little hunches or directly, you know, how to live correctly, how to live more ethically and also move help us move to the world that we want to be in you know so i think it can help us live with more harmony and creatively so mm. yeah there's a lot of reasons i wrote it but that was it was definitely like a need to there's a need in my soul to get this out there and you wrote the book and and, and obviously you know uh, people have you know been purchasing it and it gives you a good understanding of philocybin and i'm sure you're talking about the other strand dmt and all those things and have you had a chance to um, have workshops or have, uh, you, know, um, you know, speak on the book? You know, talk to us about talk to us about some of the exciting things you've been doing with the book and how yeah. it's worked out for you. You know, so I've been holding legal retreats in Jamaica for five years. I've overseen so many uh, guided psilocybin experiences. I've uh, been a part of or helped or taught in six different psychedelic guide trainings. I've been to well over 50 podcasts, you know, over this <laughs> last year, you know, I've had live workshops, I'll be leading more live retreats, you know, I'll continue, I'll, I'll write another book on this, you know, so it's, it's definitely, it's pretty full on, you know, about 30 hours a week of <laughs> psychedelic work. Yeah. So, so we talked about earlier on what psychedelics can do. I mean, obviously it helps with PTSD, it helps with a number of different mental issues, but talk in depth about psychedelic therapy in in you know in your professional opinion yeah jason you're hitting on it but here's how it works yeah no beautiful so just to bring up the work of stanislav graf you know because he started i think in the 40s before lsd became illegal um and he then created holotropic breath work he's held space for about fifty thousand people so he's a really rare pioneer in this field and he said psychedelics trigger what he calls holotropic states of consciousness states mm -hmm. that organically move into wholeness Right, so the, the wholeness meaning whatever's repressed comes up to the surface to be integrated. So, this is the reclamation of power, of peace, of safety. Um, but we'll still see that correlated with there's more wholeness in the brain and hyperconnects. So, as our system, whether it's our consciousness and body, becomes more whole, it affects every part of our lives. You know, so I'd say at the heart of depression is a sense of fragmentation of I'm disconnected from myself and other people, and I'm therefore not enough. And that also is the heart of anxiety. I'm separate from everything, so I'm scared. So this heals that, your connection to yourself, your biography, but everything else. And so it helps us out of depression and helps us out of anxiety. And it, there's been 20 years now of research of near end of life anxiety where people that have been diagnosed with a terminal illness, they have six months to year, two years to live and they're petrified in fear. And this helps them overcome the fear of death because they feel the sense of I'm connected to everything, right? Overcomes addiction because our so much of addiction is based in this feeling of not feeling connected, normally early childhood wounds, and it can help heal that. But the sense of connection also brings deep sense of creativity, which is making the connection between things. And the deep sense of connection brings empathy, which is my connection to everything, right? So it's, it's not a far out response to say it really affects every part of our lives. It helps people that are mentally ill because they're mm. feeling fractured. But it helps really healthy people. You know, there's, there's, it's well known here in Silicon Valley 
most of the CEOs use psychedelics, you know? So there isn't an area of life that it doesn't help because it gets us more in touch with our deeper self and wow. the reality. Well, let's let people know also how to get in contact with you. Um, psychedelic evolution, um, you know, a little bit about your services. What are you offering um, the audience or, or, or clients that come to you? How are you helping them? Yeah, so it's psychedelicevolution.org. You know, I do prep and integration sessions. People can consult me for more customized ways of working. You know, I'll have more retreats posted. I just came back from Jamaica about five weeks ago. Um, you can see a lot of there's like at least a 30 of the podcasts on there. And mm-hmm. you can find me on social media. It's Facebook or Instagram, you know, my first name and last name. And then the book, the book's on all the platforms and on all the formats. So you have the digital format and uh, paperback and an audiobook. So it's an audible. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. So, I mean, you know, now we can, we can kind of get into the nitty gritty, you yeah. know, you obviously you've done a ton of excursions, a ton of, uh, you've led the rituals, uh, ayahuasca journeys. I don't know if you do ayahuasca, um, but I take it. And I was just an ayahuasca sermon this last right. weekend, but I don't serve ayahuasca. Right. Okay. So you, you, you hosted these ceremonies. Give us one of your best experiences. How did it start? What happened? I mean, take us through every twist and turn. Yeah. I can't even tell you how many times I've seen people's lives change overnight, right? So I'll say that the hardest part of my work is dealing with disappointment because people can hear the most fabulous stories because it exists. You know, my life changed overnight, but it's not a guarantee. So a lot of people come in hoping for that magic bullet and it does exist sometimes, but they may not get it. So it lets you know. So it's I've seen it to be effective about 90% of people. There's about 10% of people. I'm like, I'm not really sure if this did it for you, but there's no medicine that works for everybody 100% of the time, right? Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, so many stories come to mind where people were stuck in deep, deep, deep depression. And depression, again, comes from this identity of I don't know who I am or I'm not enough. And then that breaks through and they see that they're an eternal soul that's filled with love and that identity shifts. Mm-hmm. You know, and another particular story is a woman came in and she'd been drinking heavily every day for five years. You know, lovely, lovely person, very sensitive. And she had been going to therapy for like 20 years and she couldn't get to the root of it. So psychedelics really get beyond and deeper than language. You could say the subconscious or unconscious. So talk therapy, which I love, stays at an only surface level. People, you know, people say about talk therapy, you might understand how the problem started, but it's still there. Yeah. You know, it's still stuck in the somatic kind of way. So she came in for drinking and life being out of balance. She tried all the other modalities. And so when the mushroom kicked in, it took her into her deepest agony and she realized she didn't know consciously that it was rooted in early childhood abuse, Mm. right? That pain had been there and unprocessed in her body her entire life. And now she's like 40. And so she had, I was with her as she felt this worst agony that she's been pushing away for six years. Right. So it can be a lot to move through, you know, but everything changed after that. The drinking by itself stopped. The impulse stopped. She regained confidence. And then she came back later again and then moved into a deep spiritual experience of oneness where everything. So it helps unlock the stuck patterns, whether it's going into hell and feeling the hell that part of us is stuck in or moving us into heaven, you know, and seeing that there's a potential of really merging with higher orders of light. It just seems that there's some there's a level of deep healing um, um, <clears throat> and a, a level of spiritual exploration, uh, just exploring uh, you know, all that there is all by using a mush- mushroom. Yeah. It's so beautiful. <laughs> you know, there's a sense with it for the people who really got into it that, that you're connecting with an intelligence, right? And so there's so many metaphors. One, it's, it's a doorway. And another is that you're contacting another consciousness, you know, and, the, you know, even Terrence McKenna, the great philosopher, you know, he'll really point out that the mushroom will talk directly to you. So indigenous communities see these as plant teachers. You're going in to learn wisdom from another being. So you're building relationships. So it really shifts our paradigms that when you're coming into contact with the mushroom, you're coming in contact with the spirit that you're in dialogue with. Because there's a sense on it that there's an intelligence moving you from place to place. As, as you mentioned, you took mushrooms, you felt something pulling you. So there's an organizedness, you know, that seems, and that's part of the shattering things is that there's intelligence beyond you. There's intelligence beyond humanity, you know, and nature will talk to you directly. It'll talk to you directly. And the intelligence of the mushroom is 
<laughs> when you break it down molecular molecular at the molecular level and you look at it and these ingredients you want you have to wonder i mean how how and they can move your consciousness to another realm another dimension just by taking a mushroom um and we've been able to do it through meditation but listen i've taken a mushroom it's a little bit different than astral travel i mean you're gone fast i mean it's just and it's just these emotions that you feel and the 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 fact that someone's by you and you're talking to people and you always feel like you're watched it's just it's interesting um and people you should know that you're not you're you're actually sleep when all, when all this is going on so you're not you know actually uh, up and, and 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 spazzing out no it's a peaceful mm. type um mm. sleep but there there's a lot of conflict and sometimes there's a lot of um joy that comes mm-hmm. from taking it yeah no wow. absolutely no, no, I've had, go ahead, i'm sorry go ahead, go ahead. no i've had the hardest times of my life on psychedelics cause it'll take you there and i've had the best by far so it definitely pushes to expand our own, like our range of experience. So at the University of Arizona, uh, majoring in psychology, I mean, philosophy, uh, minors in physics, psychology and mathematics. OK, so it was a shift there at some point. Yeah. So, so, as you pointed out, there was a major shift, you know, so I first went for neuroscience and then I shifted to physics and mathematics because a physics professor was like, if you want to understand the universe, you have to know physics. And so it was a scientific frame of mind in early 2000s, you know, this is 2002, 2003, that really math can explain everything. And it, it can't, it can't. There's so much more most reality. Then I had a mushroom journey three years in. And it said that if I continue down the path of physics, it'd be kind of like the death of my soul because it's not yeah. what it's really getting to the experience and meaning of what I want. And it said instead to study mysticism. And I was like, mysticism's not a major. That's not a profession. That was scary. So it, it kind of showed me that it'd be an exciting route of like unfolding mystery and you don't know where it's going. But physics was kind of showing me skulls and a dead end. And so it shifted a lot for me. You know, I had to work through a lot of insecurities, especially financial, like how, how am I going to make a living from this? What do you study? So I switched to a philosophy major, you know, because that was like oh, still the realm of wisdom, minored in psychology because I love it. And I pretty much had the minors in physics and math. And so for like, if I look at mysticism, I'm like the modern way to explain it today is consciousness. Right? You know, and, so, I, go ahead. and I and I listen to you uh, talk and intellect Mathematics, physics, and then now a mushroom that defies all of that. Totally. What did that, what was that like? Because you came from the very prove it. And, mm-hmm. and here, and, and these are the numbers, and this is the calculation to what the hell is this? <laughs> how mm-hmm. is this possible, and how do you quantify it? No, no. Well said, you know, and I was lucky that I already had that experience at 18 that shifted everything, you know, where it felt like a deep part of my soul came to recognize that God exists because it was talking to me and that I'm eternal. And it was like a part of you just woke up and it was it was a given. And I felt 110 percent real in the moment. It felt like the most real thing I've ever experienced. And then my regular reality is a shadow. You know, I even asked this being, what are we? curiosity i had and i saw light come out of the ground and fill every body and i realized it was telling me that we are love and light and they're the same thing and these are bio vessels these are space time shifts that move through space and time so we have this experience here while on this planet right and so i had this already this knowing that this knows a lot more than me it's far more intelligent and that there's a deeper reality to just our cognitive sense and so it it shifted me from like when people talk about like god is it's not like me saying like Oh, does Italy exist? It's like I've been there. I felt it in my body. I've seen Italy, right? So it's the same with the divine. And so it built a lot of trust for me to trust my intuition and that there's a deeper intelligence guiding reality. There's one thing you said that really just struck a nerve in me in that uh, God, uh, a source was made of love and light. And I live by that one principle, love and light mm. and sound. Yeah. It's so, it, it, totally. and, and I know those are just regular words to that, to most humans avatars but love light sound that's a beautiful mm. combination no it's i love it and you, you know okay. i mean go ahead the universe is is, is a made up sound vibration uh yeah. energy wow mm-hmm. 
you know, and maybe if I can add one more is power, you know, because a lot of people are missing that empowerment. And what I found in other mushroom journeys, it was kind of a sense of dealing with darkness in the shadows. Because so often we have this idea of evil and it's just like, what is evil? But like power, but it's out of touch with love. Right. And so yeah. to the degree that we can hold love, I feel we can hold power. And we need to feel empowered to make changes on this world, right? And so I think to shift our identity, not to saying I feel love or I feel power, but I am love. That's, that's more real than my name. It's what I'm made of, right? And I am power. And when we think of power, we think of power over other people. But look at the sun. It's the most powerful thing in the solar system, and it just radiates, you know? And from that sense, we are that. We are light radiating. You know, that's what consciousness is in many ways. Mm. Jahan, we, we're running out of time here. Is there anything you want to, last words you can say to the audience, words of encouragement? Maybe you have a seminar mm -hmm. coming up. Uh, maybe you want to encourage people to contact you at a certain uh, place. Anything you want to leave with the audience, is you have the floor. No, I mean, I guess, you know, I mean, encouraging them to what you're doing, the deeper sense into self-awareness, our presence, yeah. what we are. Stay curious, let excitement and curiosity guide it. you and you know, and overcome the fear because I really want everybody to follow their purpose. You know, I feel the earth births people for specific things. And I want everybody to follow their path so, so they can give their gift to the world. And that requires a lot of courage, you know. So I just want to encourage them to work whatever they need to and, you know, reach out if they want any assistance from me. You know, my website's up there and so is my email. Um, let's go back and put the website up one more time. It's psychedelic evolution, uh, dot com. I mean, dot org, psychedelic evolution dot org. Uh, Jahan has also written the uh, Philocybin Connection, um, Psychedelics, uh, trans uh, the Transformation of Consciousness and the Evolution of the Planet. So, I mean, you know, make sure to look Jahan up um, if you have that level of interest in mushrooms. And I know a lot of people talk about mushrooms and don't really know um, how to get started or what, what to do. Yeah. Give Jahan yes. a call. You know so what I can do is because I want it to be safe. We created a free online training for people to learn how to set with each other because there was no other way that we didn't see another one. And so if people want to go to the website, silohealth.co, that's P-S-I-L-O, um, health.co, and it's a group of some pharmacists and other medical professionals in the East Coast and then partly me also collaborating to create a free four-hour training because there's a lot of people that can't find mushroom like psychedelic therapy they can't go out to jamaica right and so we need people within communities especially underprivileged people in social economic systems to learn how to heal themselves and each other so it's a harm reduction model if you want to come into this you know find a guide if you can go to a retreat or ceremony if you can if you can't do that gain some knowledge and skill set so you can help you know your brothers and sisters also heal all right Glad to have you on. Jahan, <laughs> great, 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 yeah, great man. show, great information. Um, I'm going to move you to the back office. Just give me one second. I'll be there. I just want to close this out. Now, <laughs> the transformation of consciousness, your consciousness, using psychedelics, the evolution of, of who you are, uh, and being able to identify different issues, um, again, PTSD, depression, any type of mental illness, or just blockages that you may have. Mushrooms, psychedelics are, are a great, great alternative. They are close to being legal in the U.S., but there are some controlled areas where you can use psychedelics and you can get the product and start to microdose and see your life begin to change. I'm glad you got here tonight. I'm glad that you were able to find the channel at Expansion of Consciousness on YouTube. We're also on Facebook and we're also on Instagram, Expansion of Consciousness on both uh, channels. Uh, the content that we're putting out here is helpful. Uh, at the very least, it points you in the right direction to make changes, to heal, uh, to remove blockages in your life. And I'm glad to be a part of this. Thank you so much for listening to the Expansion of Consciousness. And we will see you the next time. Good night.